After much deliberation, I've decided on a season starter for Diablo 4 Season of Malignant. Now, I do want to add the caveat that you shouldn't hold me to this. It's entirely possible that I entirely abandoned my plans and I'm playing a druid tomorrow. But if I don't do that, I'm going to be playing a penetrating shot puncture rogue. There's a new unique bow that should be pretty interesting for penetrating shot, at least in more enclosed dungeons. And there's a new legendary aspect for puncture that has some very interesting poison synergy. So I wanted to test all of these things out and I've purposefully built a leveling build for myself where I'm going to be able to do that as things become available. I don't quite know exactly when I'll get everything going. I don't have a, all right, this level I put in this, that level I put in that, you know, level by level plan. I'm going to go by feel here, and I will talk about that in a little bit of detail later. The reason I picked Rogue is it's an incredibly versatile class. You can play Barrage, Rapid Fire, Flurry, Twisting Blades, Puncture, and probably a couple other things that I'm not even thinking about right now. Furthermore, especially with things like Dash, it's very mobile, so it's going to feel really, really good even at low levels. And unlike a lot of other classes, you're not locked into either melee or range. Some classes like Barbarian don't really have a ranged option. Others, like Sork, feel fatally tied to melee for your vulnerable. Rogue can do either one, which means I get to choose how I play as well. If I feel like, oh, I'm playing a melee build, I'm too squishy, well, I can just go ranged. Or if I feel like, you know what, I'm a ranged build, but I'm constantly getting in things' faces, I just want to go twisting blades and beat stuff up, I can do that as well. A lot of the fun in D4 is trying different builds, so I've picked a starter to accommodate that. And if you want to know how my season start goes, be sure to follow me over on Twitch, I'll be going live, streaming my experiences, and sharing all of that with you. I may even make a video, though we'll see how the day goes. Now that said, let's get into the build itself, and I'm going to talk about some of my choices. So here I have the penetrating shot rogue that I put together. Obviously, if I'm going to be using puncture, then you need puncture. However, at low levels, I may take forceful arrow. Being able to knock things down, kind of mess with them, is also a really good option. Puncture doesn't really come online until later, especially if you don't have the Pestilent Points legendary aspect early on, which I don't think will be super, super available. While I do have ranks in Puncture, I think it's going to be two points in Forceful Arrow, then a cheeky respect later. Also, until I get the aspect, even if I swap to Puncture earlier than that, I'm not going to actually be putting five ranks in until much later. So these are like points 50 plus as I'm approaching 50 and transitioning into the end game. Also, it should be noted, there's no Paragon boards on this tree because I'm setting up for 1 to 50, not 50 to 100. Next up, a Penetrating Shot. I have as many ranks as possible, and I'm going to look out for gloves with Penetrating Shot, though a little more on how I handled itemization later. Stutter Step, critically striking an enemy grants movement speed. I should be critically striking quite a bit, so this is nice to move around faster. I've also got Dash because I really like Dash's mobility. Is it necessarily better than Shadow Step? Well, it doesn't get you out of crowd control, but if you're just dashing around and one-shotting stuff, you probably don't get crowd controlled, so hopefully it's not an issue. If I die, I'll just go Shadow Step, or maybe I'll try Caltrops. We'll see. And then Concussive. After knocking back or knocking down an enemy, you gain 12% increased critical strike chance, because with Penetrating Shot and Advanced Penetrating Shot, I will be knocking Elites down. It's a nice way to apply crowd control. This is also a by feel thing. I could end up dropping it for improved penetrating shot, in which case I'd probably also drop concussive, put one point in rugged and two points in reactive defense. Coming down to my subterfuge skills, Dark Shroud is pretty much a must, especially with a hit to defenses that Rogue took. So I'm going full on Dark Shroud, and then I'm putting some points into exploit for a reliable damage bonus. I also have two points into malice from my amulet. I'll explain more about that later. Over here, one point in Consuming Shadows. Hopefully all the explosions means that after I Penetrating Shot, I immediately have enough energy to Penetrating Shot again as I need while clearing my priority is going to be Shadow Imbue. I do also have points into Poison Imbuement. This is for synergy with a legendary aspect. Again, I will not put these points in until later. So you can kind of imagine these as points 50 plus, just like with a Puncture stuff. And going up to Enhanced Poison Impugment and Blended Poison, Crit Strikes with Poison Imbued Skills deal 75% increased poisoning damage, which could get quite potent since I'll have pretty decent crit from a lot of sources. And I also took Debilitating Toxins to hopefully work in a little more defense. Between the Puncture and the Penetrating Shot, a lot of enemies, especially bosses, should be poisoned most of the time. Last but not least, Precision Impugment, more crit for Imbued Skills. This should apply to my Puncture as well. At least that's a hope. 
Coming down here, not taking an ultimate skill, I did consider Death Trap. At low levels, I might use either Death Trap or Poison Trap. I'm just going to have to feel that out. Possibly, well, definitely before I get an Imbuement, I'm going to go Poison Trap. But I don't know if I'll do a double Imbuement early. I might just do Shadow Imbuement, take Death Trap, and respec later grabbing Poison. If I do, these points won't do anything, so I'll probably just put them, honestly, probably over in Reactive Defense again. And last but not least, I have Precision. That way I have auto crits. I can do a lot of damage and hopefully it works out really well. Those are my thoughts with the skill tree. Again, with Paragon, I'm not doing it because the goal is to get to 50 with this setup and then experiment, see what drops and go from there. Now with my gear, this is all a guideline. This is not best in slot by any means. This is what I hope to achieve, scraping trash off the floor together. Oh, and I am combo point specialization. The goal is to go, you know, puncture, 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 penetrating shot, puncture, 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 penetrating shot, uh, weaving extra penetrating shots in when precision procs, of course. Dash for movement, double impugments, and dark shred. So on my helmet, I'm looking for cooldown reduction and ideally later ranks to poison impugment. But things like armor or damage reduction, health would also be really nice here. And then I'm thinking of might, I'm going to be weaving those punctures in anyway, and especially if I can get one with a decent duration. This way I have a little bit of an extra layer of damage reduction. 20% isn't terrible, especially with all the changes, so it should feel pretty good. Next up, I have the Tunic of a Protector. Damage reduction from close, life. In general, I'm going to look for defensive stats here. If it says armor, damage reduction, or life, I want it, and otherwise I don't. I'm also trying of a Protector for a Barrier. This would not only enable my conceited aspect if I so chose to invest into it, but it would also give me, well, a lot of health, actually, especially at the sacred cap of around 700. And then I've got, well, crit chance and ranks to penetrating shot. Sometimes my pen shot will have 100% crit chance. I do think crit chance is still a valuable stat. If this feels bad, I would go with attack speed instead. I just haven't decided between the two. And ranks of pen shot, kind of important. Looking for something like Gloves of Corruption for imbuement skill effects have increased potency against vulnerable enemies because I should have vulnerable up most, if not all of the time. This is very much going to be a by feel slot that's very flexible. Then Umbrus, which as I remember is drop only and quite rare, so it's probably unreasonable of me to expect to get it. Although I will admit I haven't looked up all the rogue codexes and I went with what looked good from a build craft perspective. So these are a little bit flexible, but lucky hit, Keep in mind, Penetrating Shot has a pretty good lucky hit chance, and it should be crit capped most of the time. It's a marksman skill. Up to a 60% chance to grant free Dark Shroud. This is extra defenses, and yeah, defenses are good. For boots, I'm thinking Quickening Fog. That way I can dash around and crowd control enemies a little more efficiently. It lets me not only use dash defensively, but also offensively. If I dash into things, I don't want them to be able to hit me before I line up my Penetrating Shot. This way, I dash in, they get dazed, I fire off a couple punctures, penetrating shot, they should be dead. On my bow, trick shot aspect, I'm of course going to be rushing this, because uh, yeah, this is when penetrating shot really turns on and starts being amazing. Before that, it's actually surprisingly decent. I did try it at lower levels and it didn't feel bad. But this is when it goes from pretty decent to actually a really, really good skill. So trick shot. Also, I'm going to try eagle horn if I can get one. I don't know if I will, I don't know when I will, but look forward to my thoughts on that. Next up for my amulet, uh, energy cost reduction seems pretty important. Maybe I'm misjudging that. When I was playing at lower levels, I did feel energy starved a decent amount of the time, but as I got things like combo points, it felt better. So overall, I do think this is a fairly flexible spot at low levels. Energy cost could be good. Skill ranks, any skill ranks, also really good as long as it gives you either damage or if you feel squishy defenses. And maybe get movement speed. Movement speed or armor sounds good. I just put on expectant here. Attacking enemies with a basic skill increases the damage of your next core skill. Because you're going to do that basic into core into basic into core kind of rotation. Ring with edge masters. This is a codex aspect. Uh, crit chance on the ring. Aside of that, damage to poisoned and resource generation are just ideas. Uh... Overall, you should have a pretty good idea of the sort of damage stats because they're on most of the items. And then the defensive stats are damage reduction, life, maybe armor, 
uh, probably armor, to be honest, and damage reduction with conditionals like from Poison close far. The other ring, again, I just throw in some damage stats to give you an idea. And Bursting Venoms. Bursting Venoms is really strong. To my understanding, there may be some bugs or issues with it causing it to overperform, but I don't remember any of that being changed in the patch notes. So it could be a fully intended but weird interaction. Either way, I kind of want to try standing in poison puddles and shooting off a bunch of stuff. It could be terrible. And if it is, I'll swap off of it very quickly. This is very much an experiment. So if you don't want to use Bursting Venoms, oh, whoops, that is the wrong ring to select. If you don't want to use Bursting Venoms, what might you use instead? I think the simplest thing might actually be Conceited, which is somewhere around here. Conceited gives you, oh, never mind, Accelerating Aspect. Yeah, this just gives you attack speed. And honestly, this might be better than Bursting Venoms regardless. So just keep that in mind. Accelerating Aspect is a great alternative, and it's a little less experimental. But if I get Bursting Venoms, I'm going to try it. And who knows, maybe I'll throw Accelerating Aspect over here instead. There's plenty of slots where it could go. On my weapons, um, Pestilent Points. I really want to experiment with this. I think it's super strong with a build like this. And so I'll see how that goes. So Rapid, when you use basic skills like Puncture, you gain 30% increased attack speed. This smooths out your rotation a lot. The faster you can get to three combo points, the faster you can fire off a penetrating shot. So having this is really good, even if Puncture doesn't end up doing most of my damage. Overall, those are my thoughts. The goal here is not maximum damage possible. The goal here is maximum quality of life, because I'm going to assume that while leveling, I'm going from pack to pack, one-shotting the pack pretty much all the time, and moving on. This build is not made for the late endgame. To be clear, this is not for pushing Nightmare Dungeons, endgame activities, or anything like that. This is a leveling build with the goal of getting me to around level 50. That's why I've made a lot of the choices that I have, and I may make them differently. In fact, I can look at an endgame guide and see what I would do differently. So let's say I was a higher level going with something similar. Barrage Rogue Endgame by Dioxide. He's great, by the way. You should check him out if you want rogue content. Wait, I said that. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's been a long day. Penetrating Shot Rogue, also by Dioxide. And let's see the aspects. We've got, okay. Cheat's Helmet. Cheat seems pretty solid. Tunic of Might. Rapid Gloves. There you go. Rapid is still used in the endgame. Disobedience Pants. Honestly, it could be a mistake on my part to not take Disobedience. The reason I'm avoiding it is because it was nerfed and I want to see how the other options feel. Also, with the nerf, the Codex version of a 0.25% per stack with how infrequently you hit on Penetrating Shot is going to feel really bad. It's entirely possible that it's still the best thing to use, though. Uh, next up, Penitent Greaves. That makes sense. That's a really solid defensive layer. I'm not counting on finding that while leveling. Crossbow instead of Bow also makes sense, but I'm not necessarily going to find it with the good old Edge Masters because you're using... All of your basic attacks first, you go up to full resource very easily. So it does make sense to put this on a weapon, again, long term. But when you're leveling, you don't want to put good aspects on your weapons because you're replacing them very, very rapidly. Every time there's a green number on a weapon, you want to swap to that. So if you put a legendary aspect on your weapon at all, it's something throwaway that you don't really care about, which is why I chose the things where I didn't think rules would matter and I could just print them off my codex. And just go back to that. That's Trickshot. I'm pretty sure any version of Trickshot is totally fine. I feel like the po Pestilent Points and the Rapid, any roll is fine. So I can hopefully just print those off of my Codex and not worry about it too much. Admittedly, maybe Trick Shot should go on my Amulet and Expectant should go on my weapon instead. Then over here, we've got Umbrus, Expectant, Trick Shot, Condemnation, and Corruption. So overall, most of my aspects were pretty similar to the endgame version. And that is a rough idea of my plan for leveling in Season 1, Season of the Malignant. I am not counting on having hearts, because I don't know how available they're going to be while leveling. With that said, if you want to check out a rough idea of my plan, I did throw a few potential hearts into the D4 planner, which will be down in the description below. But, to be super clear about this, they're just random guesses. I haven't really worried about it because I don't expect 
that a player who is leveling to 50 will A, get much choice in terms of hearts, and B, will necessarily get good versions of those hearts. A couple things that came to mind was hearts around crit chance, or anything that can increase my defenses. In fact, I believe I ended up socketing two brutal hearts just because I thought defenses were really, really important. Though if I get a wrathful heart, I'm definitely using that instead. Of course, there's a lot of unknowns. It could be that I get hearts super commonly and they're a critical part of my leveling. If so, I'll probably make a video updating you guys on that sometime. I don't want necessarily want to promise that it's going to come out tomorrow since I'm going to spend a lot of time also playing the game and leveling, but as soon as possible. Also, while I did have two assassin's blades, Realistically, sword, dagger, bow, crossbow, you put on whatever you can get, whatever has the big green number, and you use that for most of your low level experience, only slowing down when you stop swapping out gear upon swapping to ancestral items. All of this assumes that I top out at sacred, and of course at low levels I will not have legendary aspects on most things, I'm just going to go with whatever I happen to get a legendary aspect for. It could be that I'll level as Twisting Blades for a bit, then swap to Penshot, and maybe even try Barrage. The reason that I wanted Penetrating Shot in particular is it has phenomenal single target damage and really good burst, which hopefully is going to make it good for dealing with the groups of enemies spawned by malignant hearts. Though, if that doesn't end up working, I'm perfectly open to changing up my build. And that's also why I picked Rogue, because it's a great class for that. So, with that said, I'm curious, what do you plan to League start in Season of a Malignant? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And if you're looking for something else to watch, such as my thoughts on the season, battle pass, or what builds you should be playing if you plan to level. I have all of those videos linked up in the card and down below. Of course, if you prefer reading instead of watching, I'll also link to Maxwell GG, which has updated tier lists and a lot of updated build guides all ready to go, including hearts and everything you want to know. With that said, thanks for watching, congratulations on making it to the end, and before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. Links down in the description. With that, good luck on your season journey, and maybe I'll see you over on Twitch tomorrow.